all right this is something i'm pretty excited about and as you can tell by the title of this video which kind of ruins it this is the nintendo switch so let's go ahead and unbox the thing always cut away from yourself big old knife away get this thing open see what we got here and it's just a shipping summary all right and now we can actually see it inside the box so let's go ahead and get it out of here we don't need no boxes and something that has made it several people pretty worried that is that Nintendo doesn't have any security tape on it so people that are shipping it could possibly just reach in here open it up and grab it because there's no tape and I'm opening it up upside down I'm going to fix that there we go and here we go and here it is it doesn't look like anyone stole anything of mine thank God and first off what you see down below actually is basically how to set it up which is pretty self-explanatory but they have really nice big pictures i guess to help so let's go ahead and take the switch itself out of the box and sorry about hitting the camera i'm gonna go ahead and set that over to the side and set the controllers off to the side as well and as you can see i got the, the neon colored ones we're gonna take a quick look at those ones after because i kind of just want to get the not so exciting, boring stuff out of the way first. So you get a pretty thin booklet about safety and stuff that you don't really need. You get the straps for the Joy-Cons itself. Here's a quick little look at these. And from what I've heard, you really wanna make sure that you put them on correctly Otherwise, it can be a pain in the butt to get them off. And as you can see, there's a plus side right there. And you just really want to make sure that you attach it to the right Joy-Con. On the other side, we have the same exact thing, just for the other side with the minus on it. Put that away. All right. And here you get the joy Con grip. This is not the charging grip because unfortunately they don't give you the charging grip to go with it. This is, it doesn't charge it in any way. It just kind of holds it to be more like a regular controller. And as you can see, you have LEDs for the Joy-Cons. That way, you know, that way you know how much they're charged. Looks like you got some matte plastic on the outside of it and some glossy plastic on the inside, which I don't really like glossy plastic, but it's on the inside and once you put the Joy-Con in it, you're not going to see any smudges on it anyway. Just really, really simple design you got here. Alright, so up next is you got an HDMI cable. Everybody's seen an HDMI cable before. Then you got the power cord. Take that out. As you can see, it is USB Type-C. You can see that the input is 100 to 240 volts. So if I'm not mistaken, that should be dual voltage for anybody who actively wants to know. And the last stuff here in the box, I'm gonna get all this plastic stuff out of the way. You have the dock has the Nintendo Switch logo on the front. It looks like you have a little LED right there. And on this side of it, you just got two USBs. On this side of it, nothing. And as you can see way down in there, there is the USB Type-C that the Switch docks into. If you look on the back, you have Nintendo. What you wanna do is pull this out. It's just a hinge plastic thing. 
and then you plug in your AC adapter, your USB, and your HDMI out right here. That way it can go, go out to your TV. All right, and with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's get to some more exciting stuff. This is the left Joy-Con. So to hold this in your left hand, obviously, you have the, the capture button right there, your D-pad of sorts right here. They're all very clicky if you can hear that. And then you got your thumbstick, which you don't have the widest range of motion on, but from what I've heard, it's definitely workable. And then you got the two, and then you got the two top buttons, L and LZ. First thing I'm noticing is that everything is very clicky on it. And then it's just a blue matte finish all the way around, which feels really nice. And then right here you have SL and SR. Then you got the how much charge there is left. I'm guessing that's a sync button. And then an arrow is pointing to which direction you want to slide it in. So let's just go ahead and slide this into the Joy-Con grip. And as you can see, there's a little lip on the outside of it. So you want to make sure it goes on that in the rails. So then you just push it all the way down till it clicks. And then that button right there is what releases it. So you just press the button and pull up. Let's go ahead and hear that click again. Really nice satisfying click it has. Let's look at the right one, which is largely the same just with the thumb pad on the bottom. Instead, you have a plus button, you have X, Y, A, and B, you have the home button right there, you have the same things on top, you have the same stuff on the bottom here, same buttons, and obviously it's going to be on this side instead of the right side because you're not going to be sliding in the same way as the left one. But on the bottom of the right one, it has the, the infrared sensor for sensing infrared things, I suppose. Depends on what game actually has advantages of them. The only one I've seen so far that uses this is 1-2-Switch, and it's the hamburger eating game. And then these also have HD Rumble, which is Nintendo's new Rumble pack thingy that they want to call now just holding it in the hand here, yeah, it's a little bit weird trying to hold it and make sure it's on camera. And it's definitely not the most comfortable controller I've ever used, but it's definitely not bad. On the back here, where my fingers go, it gets a little uncomfortable and it feels weird and kind of feels like I don't know where to place my hands and they feel a little cramped. And I'm not sure yet since I haven't played it yet, but this could get cramped after a while, but I haven't played anything yet, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But let's go ahead and put this aside and check out the big thing here, the switch. All right, here it is. You have a big old glass display on the front, which is 6.2 inches at 720p. Seems I'm holding upside down, but here's the top here. You put the game cartridges in here. Headphone jack, you have some ventilation for it to cool itself down. Moving over, you have the volume rocker. There it goes in focus. Then you also got the power button. On the back, it just has Nintendo Switch, and Nintendo and some other information. You, ha you have the more air vents, or speakers I believe they are. Then you got the kickstand right here, which feels a little flimsy and not as well made as the rest of it, but I'm sure that's okay. And then right underneath it, which is pretty well designed, actually is hiding a micro SD card slot that supports up to two terabytes of micro SD card storage. But the biggest one they have right now is 256. Oh, right on the bottom of it, you have some screws and the USB-C charger. And on the side of it, you just have the rail system with the screws attaching the rail system to the console itself. Alright, and that it has been my first impressions and unboxing of the Nintendo Switch. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And if you guys want to see more Switch videos, 
why don't you subscribe and I'll be putting out some more videos in the next coming days. See ya.